to protect their tax collectors and government officials from mobs like the Sons of Liberty, Britain began to quarter permanent troops in Boston. Their presence led to the event sensationalized in this engraving by Paul Revere. His friend Sam Adams fully exploited the event in his propagandistic writings, referring to it as the Boston Massacre. It was a cold March night in 1770. A lone British sentry held his post on King Street. Bands of citizens were on the streets, angry after a minor confrontation with another soldier earlier in the day. A mob began to form, the sentry the target of their anger. Nearby, Captain Thomas Preston marched his guards to the sentry's side. The mob began to throw snowballs, chunks of ice at the British soldiers. One fell, and his musket fired in the air. Preston shouted to his men to hold their fire, but he was too late. His frightened, angry men fired into the crowd. Five citizens died including Crispus Attucks, a former slave. Sam Adams demanded that the soldiers be tried for murder and that all British troops be removed from Boston. Governor Hutchinson, fearing rioting, ordered the troops removed from the city proper. Later in the year, the soldiers from the massacre were tried. They were defended by three men, including one of the finest lawyers in Boston, a patriot, Sam Adams' cousin, John Adams. Facts are stubborn things, and whatever may be our wishes, our inclinations, or the dictates of our passions, they cannot alter the state of facts and evidence. John Adams at the Massacre Trials. All but two of the soldiers were acquitted. Those two were court-martialed and then dismissed from the service. With his Boston Massacre hysteria diffused, Sam Adams would have to wait for over three years until December of 1773 to engineer a truly decisive protest.